Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habatifilla a question was asked akhi could you find out how the creation can complain to his creator in which types of manners and how not to could you advise me in which manner should i be with the outer family uh, meaning the external family due to their years of shunning distancing themselves leaving a person helpless with their out of pride. Uh, first and foremost, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of our affairs easy and good. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And as far as complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of the best ways is to supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal in the prayer. Supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're prostrating before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your uh, guarding the wajibat. So make sure you're making your five daily prayers and praying them in the time striving to pray them in the masjid and doing your best to do so doing the and this is how we come closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by doing the wajibat then it's even a step further as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the hadith of qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he doesn't come close he comes closer to his servant uh through them doing their wajib and and, and the nawafil doing the extra prayers so if you are doing your wajib then begin to do your uh voluntary prayers make those sunans uh and and pray you know increase your ibadah increase your fasting yeah uh as uh, the prophet ﷺ mentioned yomo ithname wa yomo khamis that these babs of jannah are open on on mondays and thursdays fast those days fast and come closer to allah humble yourself before allah cry before Allah in the depths of the night strive your best to uh cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in qiyam al-layl so doing making all those fi'la asbab doing all those asbab and remember to waqla Allah itimad Allah wa fi'la asbab you know it is relying on Allah and doing the actions so doing those deeds doing actions you know to to better your situation to you know seek the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making effort uh to 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 deal with whatever difficulties you're going to going through this is going to be the 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 proper adab with Allah azza wa jalla that you are having the proper manners that you're worshiping him and giving him his right as is mentioned in the hadith of Muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was on a donkey sallallahu alayhi wasallam with Muawiyah and he said ya Muad atadri ma haqqa Allah ali ibadi wa ma haqqa al ibadi ala Allah o Muad do you know the right of Allah upon his servant do you know the right of the servant upon Allah Muad radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam Allah and his messenger know best he said sallallahu alayhi wasallam haqqa Allah ali ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shay'in wa haqqa ibadi ala Allah la yu'adhdhiba man la yushriku bi shay'in and the right he said um um muad the right of allah is that upon his servant is that the servant worships allah alone and doesn't uh, commit any shirk with him doesn't associate any partners with him and the right of the servant upon allah is that allah will not punish the one who uh who doesn't commit shirk with him this is adab adab ma allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is called adab ma allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this goes also to another hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which often we don't think of this and subhanallah it's amazing that some people call themselves salafi or say they're from ahlus sunnati wal jamaah and they don't pay attention to manners the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam said ma min shay'in athqalu fi mizan mu'min yawm al qiyamah wa min husn al khulq wa inna Allah yubghidu al fash al badi there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners and verily Allah hates wicked uh wicked conduct and sinful speech Here the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that that the 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 thing that is weighs heavy on your scale of a believer is your righteous conduct your righteous manners shows us the importance of manners that is going to answer that's part of the answer of how you deal with your family still treat treat them with righteous conduct to the best of your ability even if they abandoned you even if they treated you bad even if they did all kind of rotten things to you do your best to still be the better one and be the one who tries to maintain the ties of kinship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al-kareem wa qada rabbuka wa qada rabbukum ala ta'budu ala ta'budu illa ala ta'budu illa ya'budu bil walidayn ihsana Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al-kareem 
and your Lord has commanded you to worship him and him alone and to parents, uh, you know, be, have ehsan, have righteousness, be righteous with your parents in every and all babs of righteousness and in co conduct. So it's very important to maintain that. Likewise, within the context of manners, because you asked about, ma you asked about adab wa Allah, what's the way to, to uh, uh, have, uh, to complain to Allah and have those, is by worshiping him and him alone. That is called uh, adab ma Allah. So there's two types of adab. There is adab uh, ma khalik wa adab ma makhluk. So there is adab, there is a conduct that you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that means giving him his haq in worship. And that's why we mentioned the hadith of Mu'adh. And then there is adab with his creation, the makhluqat, with, with other people, with your family and everyone, and that is doing the best. Smile and be good with people, be righteous with people. Do your best to illustrate and exhibit those conduct, and remember to have our deeds accepted are two things, ikhlas wa thabat. Or mutaba. So that means that you are sincere in your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. You're doing these things for the sake of Allah, to please Allah and worshiping Allah alone. And you're doing it in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam. If you do those things, that is going to be the husna adab with Allah. That's going to be the righteous conduct that you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's going to be how you complain to Allah by following the way the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. Look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he do? And he was the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam and he was forgiven for what he uh, did from his from from before and uh, and after he would be forgiven sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what did he do in the depths of the night? He cried Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and shouldn't I be an abdin shukura? Shouldn't I be a, 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 a grateful servant? This is Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam crying. What about you and I? We should be crying, but instead we're laughing all the time. We're rejoicing all the time. We're watching comedies all the time. We're joking all the time and watching football all the time and MMA and all the time and all these other things. We're always entertaining ourselves. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi was busy with ibadah. So my advice is to be busy with your ibadah, turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, submitting yourself to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increasing your ibadah, psalm, uh, your your extra voluntary prayers, making sure that it's good, asking, begging Allah. This is the husna adab, and also in the also which emphasizes the importance of adab, and that adab ma Allah and adab with the the creation is another hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith of Abi Dar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, so ila nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam an akthir ma yudkhil an-nas al-jinna qala taqullahu wa husn al-khulq wa su ina an akthir ma yudkhil an-nas an-nar qala thum wa faraj. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked and this is a hadith of Abi Dar radiallahu ta'ala anhu I believe it's a hadith in Tirmidhi wa ghair and other than him where he said the, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked uh you know, ma min shayna athkhil fi mizan mu'min yom the messenger of Allah Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and athkhil min yurkhil nas al jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked about what is the thing which brings the people into paradise the most. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied, so listen to this. Listen, if you want to go to paradise and we want paradise, that's our ghaya, that's what the goal is. That's what it's all about. It's all about trying to get to jannah. That's, you know, what you need to focus on in this life. It doesn't mean you throw away this life, no. But it just means that the things you do in this life should complement this goal. So he says, The Prophet was asked about what is the thing that will help the people the most to get to paradise. The most! He said, uh, Fearing Allah, meaning doing His commandments, avoiding His prohibited, uh, prohibitions, and... Uh, 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 and righteous uh, conduct and all of that that doesn't negate Tawheed and that doesn't uh, distract from Tawheed because Tawheed is a part of that Tawheed is a part of Taqwa of course and Tawheed because that's worship even these righteous manners is worship and part of righteous manners in conduct Husn al-Khulq 
is husn al-khulq ma'allah. And how do we have husn al-khulq ma'allah? Is by worshipping him and him alone, by giving him his haq, as we mentioned prior to this. So it shows us the importance of fearing Allah as much as you can. And... Uh, uh, and, and having that adab ma'Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, addressing your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala with humbleness, with humility. And there's so many ahadith about humbleness and being, and tawadah. You know, that this is the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how, uh, this is the minhaj, the methodology of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. Is that they, they follow these principles of the deen fully and they exhort and exalt the, uh, exalt these principles and exhort the people to these principles and may Allah bless us to be from amongst them amin ya rabbil alamin so then he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said was asked about those things that will enter the people into nar so be away from those things this is all going to help you to have a better life because iman if you improve your iman you improve your lifestyle you improve yourself you will exhibit that to other people and Allah is going to make you increase your risk and increase you in khayr and increase you in everything in life. But a lot of times we're not willing to make that sacrifice. So what are the things that get you in the, into the hellfire? What is the wasila? What is the means? Al-thim wa faraj. The mouth, cursing, backbiting, slandering, attacking people's character, uh, speaking evil. And all that is coming from the tongue. Committing shirk and kufr from the tongue. And al-faraj, meaning the private parts, not safeguarding your private parts, masturbation, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, all of that's going to be the muharram. It is muharram and it leads you to the hellfire. So was, uh, those are wasail to jahannam. Wa'iyadam billah, wa'iyakum min an nar so, do your best to stay away from the prohibited things. Enjoy the good. Do your best to do, make the, go the extra mile with your family. And that's advice to myself and you. Complain to Allah by crying to Allah, by increasing your ibadah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and relieve us and you from all of our difficulties. May Allah increase our risk. May Allah bless us all with ikhlas, with abad al-sunnah. May Allah bless us with those things that we want and need that are good for us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.